Hello, hello. Good to see everybody. Sorry I'm late, okay? My apologies. I uh, had a few things going on here tonight and just got here a little bit late, so thanks for waiting and being patient with me. Um, I'm back home now. You can hear the train off in the distance. Uh, beautiful night. Uh, looking forward to being a little bit warmer, but it's gorgeous out tonight. I mean, clear skies. Hopefully that means a nice, warm, sunny day tomorrow. Um, so anyways, it's, it's good to be back. Had a decent day today. Uh, got back to Virginia. I was on a way on a little itty bitty kind of retreat just to kind of regroup a little bit. That was really, really good. Uh, and now I'm excited for Divine Mercy Sunday and all that God has in store for us uh, this weekend. Divine Mercy Sunday is a very special weekend. It's a weekend that um, I've seen so many people uh, come to deep conversion due to God's goodness and grace. Uh, just profound confessions and people that come to know the Lord deeply at Mass. Uh, this weekend is, is a beautiful, beautiful weekend um, that I hope all of you will engage and participate in in whatever way you're most able. Um, Divine Mercy Sunday is just full of so many graces. And it's, it's so that all of our hearts may know the deep mercy of God um, and how profound it is. All right, Jesus tells Saint Faustina, this great saint, this great religious nun in Poland, that even the most hardened heart, the most hardened heart, if they come to the Lord in Divine Mercy Sunday, His mercy will soften that heart, all right, and work in powerful ways. Um, and so that's what we want to pray for, that this Divine Mercy Weekend is a time of great blessings and great graces um, in our life. Someone's walking by behind me. You know, one of the things I was thinking about tonight, I was driving back um, from the office over to my house. Um, a couple things happened, but one is, you know, I found myself praying for those that are just really at kind of bad places in life. Um, you know, I was just driving around and you just see people that are struggling uh, and, and, and physically struggling, you know, people that maybe are addicted and enslaved to things or homeless or just you know mental illness or different situations and my heart just felt felt for for these people in these situations um, and we just need to pray for them uh, I can't imagine uh, getting to that place in life so we just want to make sure we keep the heart of Jesus for all those um, especially those that maybe are the most difficult to love at times um, that our hearts are big um, and open in those in those ways so anyways and then secondly I went to grab my book that was been talking about the monkeys in our head and I left the darn book at the place I was on retreat so I was frustrated I ran over to the church to try to find it it's all gone all right people took the darn book so anyways uh, that's okay uh, just to kind of follow up about the uh, the whole analogy of monkeys in our head some of you remember me talking about this two nights ago I talked about how often as a priest people come to me and they'll quit praying because they're always distracted or their minds going in all these crazy different directions they're thinking about what they have to do or how sad they are or how happy they are or how the kids are doing or how their parents are doing or you know what they have to do at work or they're just our minds are so distracted and crazy okay that when we sit and be quiet it's like all this noise is going on in our head and in our heart and the writer in that book I was reading was talking about these are like these monkeys in the trees okay and they're loud they're obnoxious and the, the, the longer we live, the louder the monkeys get. He was saying after a year of our, every year of life, we get a thousand monkeys. Can you imagine all the monkeys that are just loud in our head often when we go and pray? And how do we sift through all that to seek the quiet voice of the Lord? That's difficult. We can have all those loud monkeys and noises going on all around us. How do we sift through the noise and hear the voice of the Lord? You know, the one suggestion was that we make sure in the mornings we get up early. Um, and the monkeys are still sleeping, all right? Before we go to our phones and, and our social media pages and we watch the news and, and whatever we do, like, before we get there, be quiet in the morning when the monkeys are still sleeping. Because as the day goes and the more we start engaging in things like social media, the news, our families, our spouses, our kids, all the demands of the world, our workplaces, okay, what happens, all right? We lose the ability sometimes to sift through all those loud monkey voices, <laughs> all right? And so early morning prayer is super important, okay? I had a lot of people have sent me messages saying, like, 
they agree 100% that early in the morning is their best time that they pray. Others that have been trying it, it's been helping them out a ton. All right, so that's just a great, great gift um, to, to remember. That's how we can quiet those loud monkeys. The other thing, I'm just going to share an experience about today. Yesterday I talked about there's the loud kind of negative monkeys that get at us, and then there can be the monkeys that are kind of encouraging. Okay, the, the, the loud monkeys are, are like the, are the devil, all right? And the devil attacks us. He says, you can't do that. You'll never overcome that. It's helpless, you know? And he speaks like, you're not good enough. Okay, and it's this sharp monkey voice, okay? It's the evil one. And we can hear that and we can despair. But then the other voice is this gentle voice, this invitation, okay? This invitational voice that's like, trust me, come follow me. It'll be all right. I am with you, all right? And we got to make sure that that's the voice that we hear because that's the voice of God, okay? The evil one, the, the, the bad monkey, so to speak, they, they like, they insult you and they go after you and they say, it's your fault, you'll never get through it, this is impossible. Well, the Holy Spirit invites us to trust. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. All right, step out of the boat, keep your eyes fixed on me, trust me. All right, you see the difference? The one is an invitation to trust, the other is an attack where no hope is found. All right, huge. And so for me today, you know, there can be these attacks sometimes. Okay, and it can be sometimes maybe I'm discouraged about my own prayer. Or like I said the other day, maybe a parishioner starts chirping about something, a decision I made and that gets in my head. All right, sometimes I can worry and get consumed worrying about maybe my mom and my dad or worrying about one of my sisters or one of their husbands or my brother Ryan, Father Ryan. Um, sometimes I can just worry and get anxious and that voice can get in my head and then I get consumed with fear and paralysis. And, I, and, and, and that happened a little bit today. And then I got to let go and I got to step back and say, Lord, no, 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 no. You invite me to trust you. All right? I'm not going to let that voice be so strong that it paralyzes me. And that can happen to a lot of us, even in this COVID thing. And as things are intensifying and we're trying to figure out what's going to happen with our economy, when are things going to loosen up? Some of you might say, I, let's keep doing what we're doing for another month. Some of you might be saying, let's get this economy going and let's get rolling. I'm not concerned about either. My biggest concern for all of you is that you keep your heart fixed on Jesus and that you hear his gentle voice to trust him, okay? Not to trust humanity, not to trust anybody but the Lord, okay? And if you put your trust in the Lord, he'll be with you no matter how things play out. He's the one that we want to put our trust in, okay? I can't stress that enough. And so today I had this, I think the voice of the Lord was, as I was praying, was just kind of put some things in my heart for this weekend, for our Divine Mercy weekend. Got me really excited and encouraged um, for all that God's going to do at our parish this weekend. And that was a beautiful voice of rest for me today, where I, I, I heard that voice, Lord, trust me. All right, I got things to do in your people this weekend. Yes, the Lord does have so much to do for so many of us this weekend, this Divine Mercy weekend. All right, so all of you, I encourage you to stay faithful to your prayer. All right, I wish you a happy Easter, okay? Seriously, 50 days of Easter, we get to celebrate. Stay faithful to your prayer lives, okay? Stay committed to that. Remember, it's a battle, it's a challenge. But remember, your prayer is not about just saying prayers. It's about entering deeply into a relationship with a person named Jesus Christ, all right? It's not just saying prayers. It's, it's this union of relationship where I give myself to, to the Father and, and, then, and then Father through Jesus, through Jesus gives himself to us. It's this beautiful relationship. And that's what I saw happening so much during Lent and during Holy Week is that people were entering into that reality of a relationship with Christ. All right? It wasn't just going through the motions, another Holy Thursday, another Good Friday, let's just get this done. There's, that doesn't ever bear fruit. What bear fruit, bears fruit is when we say, all right, Lord, I want relationship with you. All right, I want relationship with you. And more importantly, you want relationship with me. Okay, remember that, my brothers and sisters. Our Catholic faith makes no sense. Our liturgy, our moral life, all right, and nothing, like our history, it doesn't make sense if we don't have deep relationship with the Lord. Okay, keep striving to do that. All right, holy communion with the Lord. All right, not just receiving holy communion, but that we have holy communion with Christ. All right, so... Uh, before it gets too dark, uh, let's pray night prayer together. Uh, and we'll, we'll, uh, I'm just so grateful that w this is like day 31, I think, that we've been doing this. So beautiful that we're all getting together to pray this beautiful night prayer of the church together.
So, um, again, if you have your iBreveries downloaded either on your phones or your computers, you can pull those out and then go to night prayer. What a beautiful night for us to pray together. All right, let's quiet our hearts and remember we're in God's holy presence. Put away distractions. We'll pray this beautiful night prayer now together. We begin, God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And on this beautiful night, we remember that we're in need of the blood of Christ. Christ crucified for our sins. That we crucified him through our selfish ways. Every one of us. Don't blame anybody else, ourselves. Look ourselves in the mirror, take off the mask, and say, Lord, I need your mercy. Let's do that right now. Let's beg God for his mercy this night. And together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together again we'll recite this beautiful Easter hymn, it starts with At the Lamb's High Feast. Together we say, At the Lamb's High Feast we sing, Praise to our victorious King, Who has washed us in the tide, Flowing from his wounded side. Praise the Lord whose love divine Gives his sacred blood for wine, Gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, Death's dark angel sheathes its sword, Israel's hosts in triumph go, through the waves that drown the foe. Christ the Lamb whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread. Let us with a fervent love taste the manna from above. Mighty victim from on high, powers of hell now vanquished lie. Sin is conquered in the fight. You have brought us life and light. Your resplendent banners wave. You have risen from the grave. Christ has opened paradise, and in him all men shall rise. Easter triumph, Easter joy, sin alone can this destroy. Souls from sin and death set free, glory in their liberty. Hymns of glory, hymns of praise, Father, unto you we raise. Risen Lord, for joy we sing, let our hymns through heaven ring. Now if you can scroll down um, to, I think it says Easter 2, uh, and we're going to do the antiphon, which is the Alleluia, and then we're going to pray Psalm 91 together tonight. So you can get down to Psalm 91. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord my refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. It is he who will free you from the snare, the fowler who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the plagues that prowl in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You it will never approach. His faithfulness is buckler and shield. Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. You who have said, Lord, my refuge, and have made the most high your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell. For you as he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and the trample and trample the young lion and the dragon. Since he clings to you, me in love, I will free him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I shall answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. With length of life I will content him. I shall let him see my saving power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Tonight's reading again is from the book of Revelation. They shall see the Lord face to face, 
and bear his name on their foreheads. The night shall be no more. They will need no light from lamps or the sun, for the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Alleluia. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord, we have celebrated today the mystery of the rising of Christ to new life. May we now rest in your peace, safe from all that can harm us, and rise again refreshed and joyful to praise you throughout another day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful death. Amen. Together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. John Bosco, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. just want to thank all of you for joining us tonight for this beautiful opportunity um, just to pray again together. Um, and I just am I'm so blessed. This always ends my night well, and uh, I know for many of you it's ending your nights well. Um, it's a great way for us to just calm and prepare ourselves for a good night of rest. Um, that's so important. I was struck, you know, in today's, in that reading from today, from the book of Revelation, it says, They will need no light from lamps or the sun, for the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign forever. You think about that. What, what is the book of Revelation telling us? That, that if we know the light of Christ, we'll be able to see through the darkness. Okay? That no matter what is going on in the world, Holy cow, are those birds loud. <laughs> They're like the monkeys out there. <laughs> but, but if we see the Lord and the Lord is our light, it's, it's incredibly beautiful, all right? That in, in the darkness of the world, in the chaos of all the world fighting and screaming and, and the economy falling apart, like all these sorts of things, my friends, as scary as that is, the light we need is the light of Christ. Life is so short. It's so short. And we got to keep the light of Christ in the heart of everything we're doing. Okay? Keep the light of Christ. He's got to be the one directing you. If he's not directing you, we will fail miserably. Life is so short. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and nothing else. That is the key for us, my friends. That is the key for us tonight. So, beautiful scripture reading. Um, this weekend, really quick, uh, tomorrow, I'm actually going to do Mass at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And that will be streamed live here on my Facebook page and then also on our YouTube page, okay? So 9 a.m. Mass tomorrow morning. Feel free to join us. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., I'm going to be offering confessions outside in the Holy Spirit parking lot. We're going to put up a big, large tent, and I'm going to set it up where there's good social distancing. People can pull up in the parking lot and park and wait in their cars, and then when, the, when it opens up, you can walk into the tent um, for confessions, okay? That'll be at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to find ways to do this in a safe way, but also give you as many opportunities as possible. So outdoor confession in the conf new, brand new confession tent in the parking lot, okay, at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, all right, for Divine Mercy weekend. Uh, and then tomorrow night, we'll do night prayer again together. So that's what Saturday will look like. Mass at 9, confessions at 3 out in the parking lot, and then 8.30 p.m. night prayer here on Facebook Live. Divine Mercy Sunday. I'm going to have Mass at 10 a.m. Uh, online, again, Facebook and YouTube, 10 a.m. And then I'm going to do something kind of unique. At 3 p.m., we're going to start a holy hour um, through YouTube and Facebook. So we're going to start adoration, all right? We'll, 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 we'll bring Jesus onto the altar where we can pray um, together um, and start our time of prayer. And then we're going to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet together on Divine Mercy Sunday. I'm hoping to have that sung um, and we'll do that. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to invite anybody in our parish or town to come park in our parking lot and around the whole block of Holy Spirit and Marquette School. And I'm going to do a Eucharistic procession with the Blessed Sacrament. So I'm going to take the monstrance 
and I'm going to carry Jesus around the parking lot in between cars and then out along the whole block as long as there's cars out there all right with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament you know often in the church we'll do a procession where I'll take the Blessed Sacrament in the monstrance and I'll process through the church well I'm gonna do that around the whole city block and in our parking lot for all of you and that's gonna start at 4 p.m. what I'd like to do is see everybody start at home joining in for adoration at 3 pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and then drive over to the church and I will take the Blessed Sacrament from the altar and then walk out around everybody and then come back into the church, put Jesus on the altar, and then we're going to go back live. So when you get home, you can flip it back on and then you can get the final benediction. All right? A little bit. It's going to be from 3 to 5 p.m. We start online and then we do a procession outside the church and then we close with benediction. All right? And I'll give you more information tomorrow at Mass and I'll send some more information out. And if things don't go perfect, that's all right. All right? But the goal is to bring you the Lord. All right, that you can, you can see the Lord in the Eucharist and that you can, you can bow down before him and you can worship him on Divine Mercy Sunday. All right, and that's, I think it'll be a beautiful, beautiful day for us with many, many graces that God wants to bestow upon our hearts. All right, so I just want to, God bless you. I pray you have a beautiful night um, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. We'll have Mass at 9 a.m. Please join us and invite others to join us as well. Um, a big thank you. I got back to my office tonight and just thank you to, People that sent Easter cards, just I was so I'm so blessed by your kind words and encouragements. Um, to people outside of our parish that have sent little donations in, some big donations, I'm really really grateful for all of you. Um, you've helped us uh, probably purchase our new camera that we bought. Holy cow! Um, that must mean turn out the lights. The party's over. Uh, <laughs> hang tight, one second, friends. Uh, Okay, so I'll wrap up, but just thank you for your donations because I think um, we, we received those and it's been such a gift and that's going to help pay for some of these live streaming things that we're doing and helping us just continue to operate our parish and our school. So thank you for all of you that are thinking of us and helping us financially. That's a great, great gift. So um, I pray you have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock Mass. Thank you for joining me tonight. Again, I'm praying for you. Um, pray for me and remember that the Lord is very near. Okay? Um, don't let those loud monkeys take over. All right, sift it out. Sift through all those things in your head and listen for that gentle voice of Jesus that always invites you to relationship with him and to be still and to know that he is God. God bless you all. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, happy Easter. Hopefully we'll see many of you at Mass tomorrow at 9.